Hello there, this is Dr. Mintz. This is an MRI in a patient uh, from South America who had come to the United States recently and began developing seizures. This MRI shows numerous small cystic lesions, all of about comparable size, one to one and a half centimeters size, roughly. And along with these cystic lesions, you see a very small soft tissue structure, somewhat elongate in the cyst. And this is characteristic of neurocystocercosis. Neurocystocercosis is uh, transmitted by uh, people eating somehow the uh, eggs from the pork tapeworm uh, that are usually in contaminated stool. Here we see a number of these lesions. These can cause seizures, which is the most common presentation. Headaches also is possible. And we can see the locations of these lesions are quite diverse. Uh, a lot of them seem to be in cortical sulci, like here. This one looks like it's in the brain substance. Uh, here is one that I think is in the parieto-occipital fissure. So here's a parieto-occipital fissure. And remember that in a sagittal plane, it goes obliquely from back to front. And so if you, as you follow that here, here it is here. This is probably the best view of it. And you have this cystocercosis lesion within the right occipitoparietal sulcus. And then we're starting to get in the cerebellum here. I think I saw one in one of our favorite spaces. Yes, okay, so this is this is the cingulate sulcus. And the one on the left and right both have a cyst there. So neurocystocercosis is evident with a cyst and scolex present in the cingulate sulcus. You have a cyst with a scolex in it here in the left central sulcus. So that makes this precentral cortex or motor cortex. It makes this postcentral gyrus, postcentral cortex, which is sensory cortex. And so this is central sulcus on both sides. And let's see where else some of these are lying. Uh, here's one in the midline. I think there was one in the, yes, one here, right here in the, let's see, that would probably be a portion of the corpus callosum. And I think that would be the splenium of the, Corpus callosum. Remember, you have the rostrum, genu, body, and then splenium. So, this lesion is in the splenium of the corpus callosum, being the more posterior portion, and it's very much midline in this case. This looks like there's one in the left lateral ventricle. Oh no, it's probably in this part of the deep left hemisphere. And here we have the caudate nucleus, the putamen and globus pallidus are here. And this is thalamus. So this is probably a thalamic lesion. We should be able to see that pretty well on a sagittal image. Let's see. Yep, right here. That's this one right here. So this is thalamus. Let's see. This is part of thalamus right here in the midline. And then we go off to the right and it's this structure. Remember that the thalamus is a relay nucleus to the hemisphere, to and from the hemisphere, but primarily sensory data to the cortex. Here's something in, in the thalamus. That's the lesion we were just referring to, I believe. Yeah. Um, and number of other lesions scattered elsewhere. We have a beautiful depiction of the midline anatomy here. You have the pons, you have the midbrain, you have the quadrigeminal plate, which have two superior colliculi and two inferior colliculi. Here you have the optic chiasm above the cella turcica. 
So these would be the optic tracts coursing posteriorly from the optic chiasm, and the optic nerves would be coming to the optic chiasm. The optic chiasm crosses immediately superior to the cella tersica, this little scooped out bone space that is in the sphenoid bone. And here you have a nice plump pituitary gland, and you have the pituitary infundibulum here, which connects from the hypothalamus to the pituitary. And in this manner, the hypothalamus communicates with the pituitary to control it. Here you have the thalamus, as I mentioned before, and here you can see that the hypothalamus is beneath, or hypo too, relatively speaking, the thalamus. So the hypothalamus is in this area, which is third ventricle, and so the hypothalamic tissue is in the walls of the third ventricle, and they provide the control of the pituitary hormones. Here you have the pons and the cerebellum. This is the fourth ventricle. Here you can see the straight sinus going back to the torcula herophily, which is confluence of sinuses, and quite a number of cysts. Here you can see the one we were talking about. I thought it was in the splenium, which would be here, but actually it's posterior body. This bone is the clivus. This level here is the big hole, a.k.a. foramen magnum. And central nervous system below that is called spinal cord. Central nervous system above that is called brain, but it's really an arbitrary division. And I think that the spinal cord gets very little press when in fact there isn't a brain and spinal cord in the way we ordinarily think of it, but there's a central nervous system. And I think we have missed, uh, missed some of the organizational principles of the spinal cord, which could be applied to the brain. The brain remains a mysterious area where we look at fiber tracks now with MRI and functional MRI. And there's a great deal of complexity here, and we, we are just amazed at what it can do, but we really don't understand it when the very same tissue here in the spinal cord is much more well understood. So I think it is an artifactual division that we make between the brain and spinal cord, and I think that we do not emphasize enough the application of organizational principles of the spinal cord to the brain. There is no reason to think there is a qualitative change in the organizational principles when one moves from the level of the spinal cord to the brain. So this big hole is an arbitrary division and I think we need to think about that more in our attempts at understanding the brain. So this is a very dramatic example of Neurosister sarcosis. Among cases of neurosister sarcosis, this is the more common presentation. The solitary large cystic sarcosis lesion I have shown also on CT and MRI in a different discussion uh, is less characteristic. So this multiplicity of cystic lesions with the soft tissue scolex in it are, is the more common presentation. Okay, that's it for now.